All right, so um, the fall of Napoleon. And we're going to find out that Napoleon's biggest mistake will be repeated by a future dictator um, with no redeeming qualities, unlike Napoleon. Um, and that's invading Russia. So Napoleon tries to invade Russia. He's not following his dictates, his orders. Um, and he does so in June, right? And everyone knows if you're gonna invade Russia, you have to invade Russia at the first thaw of spring. So by the time winter comes around, you've made it to Moscow because you're not gonna beat Russia in the winter. You're not. They're too big, they're too tough, they're, they're hardy. Um, Russia is, you know, don't mess with Russia. Um, so Russia knew that if they could draw the battle out, when the winter came along, they would freeze out the French army, and that's exactly what they did. So every time the French army would advance, and they advance in the north of Europe, through Poland, um, headed straight to Moscow, no, they're not, they weren't making any other stops, um, they would get to a city, there would be a little small skirmish, and the Russians would leave. But as they left, they would burn the city to the ground. That is some serious, what's the right word I'm looking for? Um, that's some tough battle tactics. I mean, you're destroying your own country. You're burning cities to the ground. Why? Why would they burn these cities to the ground? And the answer is, so the French can use those cities for shelter. So each city along the way, the French would camp out. They, as armies used to invade, they would camp outside the cities. They would put up tents. They would have fires. They would cook and get ready for battle. And when they took over the city, they would then move into it. And they would take all the food and the houses and the warmth. Well, the Russians would not let them do that. And battle after battle, step by step, the French would win, but the Russians would burn the city down. And by the time they got to Moscow, they saw that the city was burned to the ground. Um, there was a big battle outside Moscow. I think that the French may have won the battle, 30,000 French dead, 40,000, 50,000 Russians dead. But the thing is, now the French are stuck in Russia, okay, in Moscow, and it's cold and there's nowhere to stay and they have to retreat. They can't hold on to their victory, right? So the French now retreat back to Poland, but um, on this retreat back through the freezing cold, 500,000 people die and Napoleon's army is basically dead. It's gone, it just disappeared, okay? Um, the rest of Europe saw this and they rushed in to defeat him. They quickly defeated him um, and they sent him to exile in the island of Elba. He said, you, this, you get out of here, Napoleon. Um, we won, we took Paris, we took France, and you have to go live in Elba. Here's the thing, and they put a relative of King Louis the 16th back in power. Here's the thing that Napoleon isn't gonna, gonna give up that easy. And he comes back the next year, determined to win back his empire. And when he shows up, the French support him, they loved him. Um, and they fight one last massive battle in a place called Waterloo, and Napoleon loses against the rest of Europe, <laughs> and they, okay? Um, and they send him to a faraway island in the middle of the ocean called St. Helena, where he dies of natural causes in old age about six years later. And Europe is back to normal. But what does normal look like in Europe? Um, the French Revolution really lasted for 25 years. That's a long time. People didn't live that long. That was most of most people's lives. It had lived their whole life during a new Europe, during a new France at least. Um, and how are we gonna put the pieces of Europe back together? What's Europe gonna look like now? So the, these men, they gather at the Cong Congress of Vienna and four major countries meet. It's Russia, Prussia, which is Germany, Austria, and Britain. And they decide that we're gonna put a relative of, of King Louis XVI back in the throne and we're gonna make France a kingship. This is called conservatism. The idea of let's go back to how things were, they used to be better 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Um, there's an opposing idea called liberalism though. 
in Europe during this period, and liberalism is enlightenment ideas. It's wanting to move forward with new, better ideas and change how things have been in the past. Um, and these two ideas are gonna battle for the next 100 years in Europe, 50. Conservatism versus liberalism.